Good morning, or good evening, or good afternoon, whatever. Thank you for being with us. I would like to start with a question about peace journalism. Mm -hmm. You have been working on this since 1963. 60. Since 1960, in fact. And it is one of the most uh, studied elements of your uh, very rich body of work. The question is, could you tell us a little about the theory and uh, if you could revisit it today? Well, it all started with an empirical study. And the point that we were interested in at the PRIO, at the Peace Research Institute of Oslo, at that stage, was what was the criterion that an event had to satisfy in order to become news? You know, quite a lot of things are happening in the world, and we were as usual interested in international events. But not everything can be reported. And we found, roughly speaking, four criteria. And these criteria distort the image of the world. And let me mention the four criteria. They are the following. First of all, it should possibly be about countries high up. Number two, people high up. Number three, it should be about actors not about processes and structures and such things. And point four, it should be negative. There should be something negative happening. One could say an almost pathological addiction to the negative that everybody is complaining about today, that media are so negative. Now, we discovered one more thing. And that, in a sense, is a little bit deeper. Namely, that if news are about leading people in leading countries, actors, then it could even be positive. It doesn't have to be negative. And a typical example would be the birth of a baby to a queen, to a princess. You couldn't have bet much better news than that. But of course the ideal news that we wrote into the article, Marie Rugge and myself, in the Journal of Peace Research, was Kennedy and Khrushchev killing each other in a duel at a summit meeting. That would be negative, it would be actors, it would be leading people from leading countries. It would be known all over the world after 10 seconds or something like that. So if you add up the four factors, you get the events that certainly make it. But you don't have to have plus four. Plus three, plus two could also help. And that makes for something very sad. If we are not talking about leading people in leading countries, but about ordinary people in very ordinary countries, maybe poor countries, then it has to be massively negative. And it can even be structural, like a natural disaster. Even better, of course, is a war, a military coup fighting action. But it has to be deaths in the hundreds and the thousands in order to make it. Conclusion. The countries low down in standing international are depicted negatively. The countries high up are depicted more positively. So if you look at that, you come up with the idea of peace journalism. And peace journalism is a way of counteracting this. Above all, telling the positive stories from the countries low down and from the people low down. And there are positive things happening. There is self-reliance, there is lifting the bottom up, there are things happening. Also, of course, telling the negative stories about people high up. When they are having their conspiratorial meetings, for instance, planning the world to their image. Now, that's known as investigative journalism, and to us, peace journalism is more positive. And you can say that we enter the field of conflict not with a view to finding out who is the stronger, 
being victorious in violence. But with a view to finding out how could we solve the conflict by peaceful means. And that means, of course, that one challenges the statesmen, be that high up or low down, or whoever it is, may not necessarily be politicians. Could be business people, could be intellectuals. When an act of violence has occurred, to try to identify the underlying conflict and then try to identify how to solve that conflict. Behind that is some kind of axiom, which I believe in quite strongly, and I think I have reasons for believing in it, that wherever there is violence, it's a sign from an unresolved conflict or an unreconciled trauma, deeper down. If you don't like the violence, remove the causes, please. Solve the conflict, reconcile the traumas. And there you have peace journalism in a nutshell.